I want to take you to flashback three months ago, okay? And you might have heard red wave whenever someone talked about the midterms, but you're definitely not hearing that phrase a lot anymore. Democrat Mary Patola just won an upset victory to become Alaska's representative. She defeated Trump favorite Sarah Palin in a state the former president won easily in 2020 and where Sarah Palin was a governor. And after a string of legislative victories, President Biden's approval rating is now back to 40 percent, according to a new Quinnipiac poll. For now, Democrats seem to have the momentum, but there's less than 10 weeks to go until the midterms, and anything can happen, y'all. So joining me now to discuss is an all-star panel. Toulouse Orla Renipa is a reporter for The Washington Post and soon-to-be White House bureau chief, I might add. Amisha Cross is here. She's a Democratic strategist. And David Jolly is here. He's a former Republican congressman from Florida. Amisha, I want to start with you, because not including Alaska, the Cook political report moved four other seats into more favorable territory for Democrats. Right now, it looks like Democrats have the momentum. But is it enough to make a difference in toss-up states like Virginia or Arizona, for example? It definitely is. And I'm so glad that you bring this point up, because we do have to look at those states and the demographics that exist there. For Democrats, the key is to ensure that they get the same voters out that they got out in 2020, treating this as though it is another presidential election, being that those demographics, those people of color, the younger voters, um, they have to understand the importance of this election cycle. And midterms, historically, especially for Democrats, are typically lower turnout. But I think that because of the side swipe that the Republicans have taken when it comes to women's reproductive rights when it comes to anti-LGBT laws that we're seeing passed in various various states across the country. There has been a fervor of excitement among Democrats, and I don't think that's going to go away too soon. You know, David, speaking of that fervor and excitement, there's a political article talking about abortion and down-ballot races, particularly in North Carolina. And it reads in part, Democrats on the ground are pouring organizing power into these races and leaning into abortion and conversations with voters believing it could shift the political environment in their direction. David, it seems as though the fall of Roe is going to give my Democratic friends power on the ground to affect not just these national races, but state races, too. It absolutely will. Look, they're calling it online Rovember, and that might be exactly what we're about to see. You know, races, as you know, Simone, elections are typically either persuasion elections or turnout elections. You're either turning out your base or you're trying to bring voters over. Democrats this cycle might have the opportunity to do both. Their voters now are expressing a higher intensity level, but you also have the opportunity to bring what bring over persuadable independents and disaffected Republicans, mainstream Republicans. And so you're seeing a bump for Democrats of three, four, five, even six points in most races. That could be enough for Democrats to defy history in November. It could, I mean, the economy is a part of this, too, okay, Tolu? Republicans love to say the economy is the most important thing. And it, it seems like, though, to me, that President Biden is delivering. I mean, there was a strong economic report that came out this week. Over 3,000 jobs were added. Labor Secretary Marty Walsh, 300,000, pardon me, 300,000, not just 300,000, okay? The thousand is important here. Labor Secretary Marty Walsh was out doing victory laps explaining these numbers um, just this week. I want to play for you something he said on MSNBC. Take a listen. For the last six months, you know, I've been getting questions and we've been hearing reports about inflation and, and about um, heading towards a recession. And, and quite, when you look at the other side of the coin, we have 11 million job openings in the United States of America. We have five to six million people eligible for those job openings. We have a shortfall of workers. We just don't have enough workers. Democrats going to own this issue? What are, what are you hearing in these reporting streets? Yeah, a couple of months ago, Democrats were on defense over the economy. We had a lot of people talking about a recession that was on the horizon. You had some growth numbers that didn't look so great. Two quarters of negative growth, people were saying, we're just on the verge of a recession. We're going to be losing all these jobs. But we've seen month after month consistent job growth. And Democrats are now sort of going into November essentially saying, we are delivering. We passed the American Rescue Plan. We have put all of this uh, effort into making sure that people could get to work looking at all the job openings that are out there in the economy and also looking at the fact that we have continued to add a high number of jobs every month and there's no sign even though you know the fed is doing what it's going to do mm -hmm. there's no sign that the job growth is stopping so it does appear that democrats are going to be talking about jobs and the economy and their legislative wins uh, for the next few months as well the fed will do what it's going to do but we don't necessarily know what that is now amisha among democrats um there's a quinnipiac poll that i mentioned and earlier 
the Quinnipiac poll says that most Americans agree with the president's student loan decision. Now, that obviously uh, is something that was definitely in the news over the last week or so. And this Quinnipiac poll, it breaks down along party lines, as you would expect. 88 percent of Democrats approve, 81 percent of Republicans disapprove. Is that a number that indicates that this is an issue that will get people to the polls? I believe it is, Simone. We, we have to be real about this. Student debt, student loan debt in particular, is one of the fastest growing expenditures that this nation has ever seen. The multi-trillions of dollars in student loan debt that this country currently holds is something that we will not be able to rise above unless there is federal action and federal response. Um, we also know that black women and black student debt in particular, black women's student debt, is the highest amongst any of these groups, in large part because of the lack of familial wealth, the lack of historical wealth, but also because black women, particularly once they graduate, even with a degree in hand, end up in jobs mm -hmm. that salaries pay them the exact same as a white man with just a high school diploma. So they are at the intersection of both racial disparities as well as gender inequality when it comes to this pay gap. It is very important that we recognize that, but again, that there are so many people across this country, particularly those not only younger Americans, but also many people who are adults who took out student loans for their kids and are still paying mm -hmm. back their own student loan debt, who this would essentially assist. I mean, it's an issue. We, we could do this all day. Before I go, though, Tolu, I you know, this is a moment to, that to me seems like a five alarm fire. But when I open up the newspapers every day, it, it doesn't feel that way in what I'm reading all the time. What, what are the reporters saying to one another about well, this moment? <laughs> There's a lot going on. I mean, you've got the former president who's having his home uh, raided by the FBI because he may have been involved in crimes. You've got different state legislatures that are rolling back voting rights. You've got things happening when it comes to privacy and personal rights of people. So there is a lot going on. There's a lot to cover. And obviously, you have President Biden going out there trying to ring the alarm and trying to make sure people know that there's a lot at stake in this upcoming election, not only in 2022, but also in 2024. Uh, so there is a lot to cover. There is a lot when it comes to the, the stakes of the democracy that we all live in, that we all sort of have to uh, defend. But you know, it's hard to keep up with everything. It's hard to make sure we're covering everything appropriately. But uh, we're doing our best as reporters to make sure that we are making sure that people are focused on what's happening, not only at the federal level, but also in states, because a lot of the rights that are being rolled back are happening in states. So there's a lot at stake uh, in November, and we're trying to make sure that people know about as much of that as possible. Spoken like a true future White House bureau <laughs> chief. Tolu, Amisha, David Jolly, thank you all very much. I look forward to chatting with you all again very soon.